The Culture Proof Conference is coming to Bartlett, Tennessee. Man. That is just outside of the Almost Memphis here. area. And we are super excited about it. If you're yes. not registered, now is the time to get registered. As yes. you look at the protests that are breaking out all across this country, you've got people barricading themselves inside classrooms. You've got people setting up encampments and feeling like they're entitled to do it. Well, joining us uh, is Dr. Renton Rathbun. And Dr. Rathbun is the director of the Biblical Worldview the Center for Biblical Worldview at Bob Jones University. And, you know, as a secular professor, he encountered some of these kids, these kids who feel entitled, these kids who feel like they are only willing to defend their parents' religion in as much as it doesn't cost them anything. Um, and he's going to be speaking to some of our young people at this conference. So if you've got um, a early adult, young adult, um, what do you call working class adult, maybe they're not yet married, um, and don't have children, uh, they're going to want to participate in this Culture Proof Conference. We're really excited that God has equipped us to respond to what is happening in the culture. So we hope that you'll go to the website, cultureproof.net, and learn more about the conference, see who's speaking, think about what some of those topics are, and whether or not you and your family will benefit from this. Yeah, and don't forget about our children's track. You know, we know that uh, they are making the decisions right now at the age that they are in to follow the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. their biblical worldview is being shaped. Their worldview is being shaped. And so we have a powerful uh, children's track, teens track. Uh, you're not going to want to miss that. You, you, this is something for the whole family, yeah. for the whole family. And we want to minister to the whole family. We understand uh, that the world understands that children <laughs> are needed mm -hmm. uh, to carry out what they desire for them to do. We know for the kingdom of God, he want, he, God wants the children to be a part of what he's uh, going to do in the earth as well. So go to cultureproof.net, cultureproof.net. Uh, man, t now is the time to register. Now is the time to register. Registration uh, will be ending soon. And so you want to make sure that you go to cultureproof.net and get your tickets for the Culture Proof Conference. We believe it's going to be an encouraging time for you and hundreds of other believers who will be on site yes. at Faith Baptist Church in July, July 18th through the 20th. We want to see you there. As my husband said, cultureproof.net cultureproof.net get registered and tell a friend thanks for checking out culture proof i'm miki and i'm will and today we are talking about dominion husband theology wait mm. what yeah no it's a thing and we're going to be talking about it wow. in fact we're going to be talking about it over the course of several podcast episodes because it's just that big <laughs> to undertake and we wanted to do a fair job with it and the reason this conversation is coming up again is because of the Kansas City Chiefs kicker, Harrison Bucker, mm -hmm. who um, gave a commencement address at uh, Benedictine College. And it's a Catholic college, and Harrison Bucker is Catholic. Now, mm -hmm. we are not Catholic, right. and we have some doctrinal and theological issues with Roman Catholicism True. that I think it's important for us to say that, yeah. because I don't want people to think that when we start to affirm what Harrison Bucker says as right and as true, that we are also affirming his theology. Right. So, right. and man, listen, we live in a time where we've got to be able to say, you know, there are instances where people can get things really right, but they can also have some really faulty theology, right? right? right so right. that's important. We're not going to spend this podcast talking about what those differences are, because that would be a podcast episode in and of itself. That's and right. so it wouldn't serve you well or our purpose, uh, which is to discuss dominion husband theology. Wow. So I just want to make sure that we all pause for a second to recognize that <laughs> that's a thing. Mm. And I just said that like, that's a complete like, like tenet of faith. Okay. But there is a whole sect of men who believe that their role is to dominate their wives and they are sort of re-emerging uh, in the wake of Harrison Butker's statements, which I think is a problem because I do not find at all, I do not find mm -hmm. Harrison Butker's statement on women or his wife right. to be a domineering statement no, or to be all. a statement where he is talking about subjugating his wife. Like it is just ridiculous. He was giving props to his wife. Yes, <laughs> really. He he, come on. He was praising her, you know, openly, you come know, on. for the great job that she's done, even setting aside some things and sacrificing yes. that she would be there for the, their kids yes. and, and for the home. So man, he was giving props in it. As, as a Christian, man, we should all be applauding that. Yeah, absolutely. You know what's <laughs> crazy, though? What's crazy is that many, many years ago when um, Bill Gates and his wife at the time, they're now divorced, uh, Melinda Gates, 
uh, publicly talked about how she made a decision to take a uh, kind of like, you know, uh, reduced role in corporate America because they couldn't both be going at 100%. And mm. she wanted to devote her time to the rearing of her children. You heard nary a peep. <laughs> like this was yeah. not a big deal. I really think that because Harrison Bucker's statements are driven by his religious conviction, nice it's yeah. driven by a right fear of God. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this is why people have such an issue with it. Oh, and I 100%. mean, my goodness, they're just coming out of the woodwork. They want to cancel him. Of course, we want to update you on where that all is because he hasn't been canceled. And he, he will not be. So why do you think he won't be canceled? I think that are uh, many um, people who agree with him um, and may not have the boldness to, to say that. Yeah. And I think people see how society is and they're like, man, yeah, that's yeah. great. You know, we need more of that. Yeah. And so I think while you will have an audience that desire to cancel him, you know, I think the audience is bigger that's applauding him. I really do. I, I think the audience that want to cancel him may be louder, mm -hmm. but I think the audience that really are riding with him are, are they're bigger. Yeah, you they know? are. And, and and when you have your, your boss and your boss's wife and, yeah, we're you know, talk about that. saying like, man, I applaud that. I think he's going to be all right. Yeah. But I, I'm glad he's taking a stand in culture and saying mm -hmm. what he's saying because it has to be said. And, Amen. And someone who has had success like him, yep. you know, and, able, and is able to say, man, this is why. And again, no endorsement for his, you know, religion or whatever. But this is why, because of his faith and because of his wife, because of what they decided to do. And I, I think, man, that's something that you don't normally see out of athletes. Yeah. You know? And, no, and, and because it's, listen, it's, it's good. What you what you see coming, and I hate to say this, and I don't want to paint with too broad a brush to where, you know, it just puts everybody in the same category. Mm -hmm. But what is common traditionally from people in his, you know, area of work, okay? So you think about these professional football players, professional athletes, they are unfaithful to their wives if they're married okay right. uh if they if they are married they are unfaithful to their wives uh they are known for beating their wives and having these misogynistic attitudes toward their wives genuinely and and when i say genuinely misogynistic meaning that the, their wife is just there as a piece of candy <laughs> there as an accessory so she becomes like a human purse yeah. for them okay and and they have no regard for her as a person made in the image of god and i mean and these are the kinds of things that i feel like get swept under the rug mm -hmm. by the way mm -hmm. like nobody talks about the women who are beaten by their football player wives or mm -hmm. husbands the women that are beaten by their football mm -hmm. player husbands nobody talks about that right. and we should be talking about that but what we are talking about today really shows us where we are as a society and as a culture. And what happens is because this thing is such an issue, right, where there is such a move by women to emasculate men and there's such a move by men to accept it. Mm -hmm. OK, you've got a full pendulum swing that then brings out the crazies who are claiming to be Christian and saying that their role as husbands uh, is to dominate their wives. And we're going to talk about that as we kind of like just take our time through this. Yeah. And it's not going to be done in one podcast. Right. One of the things that I think is important to do, though, is to actually play the comments from Harrison Bucker, because mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm seeing online that I think is absolutely hilarious, especially like the um, the social media talking heads, mm -hmm. you know, the TikTokers and, and the X and the Instagram posters. It, one of the things that bothers me is that they all seem to be speaking to someone's opinion mm -hmm. about what Harrison Bucker said. Right. So they're not actually speaking to his comments. Right. They're speaking to comments on his comments, which I think <laughs> is folly. I think yeah. it's absolute foolishness to do. And I think it's important for us to play at least the portions of his commencement speech that, you know, have really brought out the screaming women. <laughs> like it's a it's a crazy, crazy. thing to watch happen in yeah. our culture because there is this phenomenon that when men speak, you know, and they say certain things, these howling women come out. And man, I do not think of myself <laughs> as a weak or silly woman. I am, I do not hate women at all. Um, of course, I feel like it's, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have to say that, but I do. Cause yeah. I read the comments online from people who defend God's order and God's design for women. They are seen as self-loathing and right. self-hating women, archaic, <laughs> you know, you, why do you hate yourself? 
Uh, anyway, the thing is that we don't hate ourselves. We love God. Amen. Right. And Amen. and the desire is to honor him and to live a life that is consistent with what we see in scripture. So yes. to that end, what I want to do is I want to play some of the clips from the commencement speech so that Harrison Bucker is heard in his own words. Mm -hmm. Like even when you see on our social media pages, if you follow us on, on Facebook, you follow us on Instagram, you will see that we we're posting memes, but we are also trying to give context. So we will include the actual portions of the speech that we think are pertinent to the post that we just made. That's right. A lot of people aren't doing that because they just want to argue their their point. Right. They just want to argue their position. Right. I think that's foolishness. I think it shows immaturity. And I think that Christians should be above that, yeah. um, especially Christian women, as we see a lot of them coming out of the woodwork uh, mm -hmm. to talk about, you know, why they are sort of like a Christian feminist. And mm -hmm. anyway, there's a conversation to be had around that. <laughs> I want to play these clips, but before I do that, I want to say thank you to our premier sponsor, BJUPressHomeschool.com. Yes. We could not do this podcast without BJU Press Homeschool coming alongside us and saying your content is valuable. Mm. We trust them to help us educate our kids. It is an added bonus that they also sponsor this podcast because they believe in the work of culture proofing the next generation. Yes. If you are praying about educating your kid at home and you felt overwhelmed by that, you think there are just some things I don't know what if they're going to be gaps what subjects do i need to cover bjupresshomeschool.com has you covered there mm -hmm. are homeschool consultants all across this country who show up for you to help you navigate the space that is educating and i would say even greater than that discipling your kids at home we trust them with helping us shape biblical worldview and our kids strong godly character we believe that you can trust them too. They are the premier sponsor of the Culture Proof Podcast. Go and check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com, bjupresshomeschool.com. When they ask how you heard about them, mm -hmm. please let them know that the Addisons sent you. That's right. All right, back to Harrison Bucker. Let's just listen to some of his remarks at Benedictine College, which, by the way, is a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. He is a staunch Catholic. <laughs> he has been for a long time. He was invited to give a commencement speech to a group of people where the expectation is we have shared values. <laughs> we have a shared conviction. Um, if you do not believe in Roman Catholicism, probably shouldn't have gone to a Catholic school. Right, <laughs> right. If right. you're offended, and and which, by the way, there were women in the audience. Now he got a standing ovation. By the way, I he just did. feel like let me jump to the he end. Did. You know, yeah. and he got a, applause for a portion of his speech. Yes. When he talked about women. Yes. You know? So there were people there who were who were tracking with him. Absolutely, you know? I so. would say the majority of the people yeah. were tracking with him. There were some women who came out afterwards and on their social media talked about how they were offended. And how they were just heads rolling all around. Where's and my violin? You, exactly. That clip. Exactly. I'm like, then you probably should have just gone to Columbia. <laughs> right. You'll be right at home there. <laughs> Harrison Bucker would not have been invited oh, to give man. commencement speeches at like, you know, Columbia <laughs> right. or, or, you know, Harvard or Yale or Berkeley, Duke or, what, or Berkeley, whatever. He would not have been invited there. Yeah. He was invited to Benedictine College because it is a Catholic college. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is a Catholic school. They have Catholic values. They have Catholic teachers and Catholic classes. So there's that, <laughs> okay? But let's hear what he actually said, snippets of what he actually said, and then come out and have a conversation around it. Yeah. Because the question is not whether or not we like Harrison Bucker. Mm -hmm. That's not the question. The question is not whether or not he said uh, what is culturally normative for us as Christians? The question in our mind must be: Okay, is what he said biblical? Mm. Did he get did he get close to scripture when he said what he was saying? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think what we're gonna find is that he did. Mm -hmm. the, and some of it is just his opinion right. about his life experience. Like, and it's crazy. Anyway, okay, let's just <laughs> play the clip. Let's go with the first one here, uh, where he starts talking about the women mm -hmm. who are present there. And I think this is where, you know, our collective culture lost their mind. Okay, here we go. Harrison Bucker, Benedictine College. Ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. 
How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. She's the primary educator to our children. She's the one who ensures I never let football or my business become a distraction from that of a husband and father. She is the person that knows me best at my core, and it is through our marriage that, Lord willing, we will both attain salvation. I say all of this to you because I have seen it firsthand how much happier someone can be when they disregard the outside noise and move closer and closer to God's will in their life. Isabel's dream of having a career might not have come true, but if you asked her today if she has any regrets on her decision, she would laugh out loud without hesitation and say, heck no. Okay, listen, so I think you can mm -hmm. hear kind of coming from that um, a little bit, almost immediately, where we would disagree with Harrison Bucker. So let me just start with that. Yeah. Um, marriage does not save us, right? right? And, and I'm not sure that he was actually saying that yeah. marriage saves us. I do know that there is a component of works, works right. that is involved in Roman Catholicism, right. right? That there is a there is a component of us being tasked with doing certain things uh, in addition to putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear, and I said I wasn't going to go into it, but it's important, and I, I want people to understand where we are. The Bible is very very clear that we are saved by faith through grace saved by grace through faith yes <laughs> let's get that wrong let me say it again the bible is very clear that we are saved by grace through faith in That's the right. lord jesus christ mm -hmm. it is a gift of god not of works lest any one of us should boast right. and the bible is very clear that there is no glorying in our flesh so when he adds that you know through their marriage you know, that they would obtain salvation, that is largely po problematic for me. Mm -hmm. Having said that, and putting that neatly out there so that people understand our position, because it's important to speak with clarity, I don't have any problem with <laughs> what he said about his beautiful wife, Isabel. Mm -hmm. I don't know Isabel, right. okay? I did not have the blessing or the privilege of meeting her in band, you know, like he did, <laughs> right? I'm sure she's a great gal. I'm sure she would have been great to be friends with her. Uh, but what is wrong with him celebrating his wife mm. and saying she made sacrifices for our family, that she put our family first, and that has allowed me to utilize the talents and the gifts that I have? Like, where is that oppressive to Isabel? Not only does he stand up there receiving all of these accolades, mm -hmm. but he turns back and sort of gives praise to his wife, which yeah. is so biblical right, right? that she would be praised by her husband. Yeah, it's no problem at all. The problem is that we live in a culture that's against that type of thing, you know? And it seems uh, to, to some people that that's archaic, that that's oppressive, but he's praising her for sacrificing. Yes. You know, he's like, man, she could have had a career that she could have designed in her own making and whatever. She, she had... It sounds like she had the talents and abilities to do the things that, but man, she was like, hold on, just wait. I, I want to do this. And it, it sounds like it was her choice and their choice yes. to do so, that it wasn't like he forced her to do this. You have to stay home. It sounds like she was willing to give up some things in order to have what she wanted the most. Yeah. And so applaud. I applaud them. 
you know, praise God for people like that, that still have that type of uh, desire within their heart. And that, and him who's able to openly praise her for that. I think he, he deserves props for that. Absolutely. It is surprising to me, and it shouldn't be because this is just the time that we are living in. But it is surprising to me and, and, and not a little bit upsetting as well, that when a woman is talented or gifted, has leadership qualities, the world says that you are wasting that on your husband mm. and children. Wow. Like, I yeah. don't understand. So it's like, you know, and, <laughs> and I want to say this carefully, you know, but it's like all of the, the can't do's should be at home. Mm. Like, wow. so that's the value that we put on children. That's the value that we put on marriage. You know, you really couldn't make it in the world. So you probably should just stay at home and, and bake bread. Mm. Whereas what, what Harrison Bucker is saying, he is acknowledging that his wife is brilliant and that she could have gone out to pursue a career and mm -hmm. maybe she would have been successful at that. But she has undertaken the vocation of being a wife and a mother. Yeah, it, it's amazing, too, because what he's not saying is, is if you're pursuing a career that you're you're terrible. He's yes, not saying that either at all. That's a great point. You know, so uh, I think we need to pump the brakes. Like he's saying that this is what his wife did. This is what their family did. And that should be applauded. Yeah. But he's not saying like, okay, um, so no woman should work and no woman should have a career <laughs> and, and all of this. Yeah. Man, you know, great. so it's just nonsense. We live in a, a confused society. You know, people feel like, man, you know, these statements are oppressive, especially if it's coming from a certain faith. You know, it's like, oh man, as a white man saying this, oh, like, it, that's right. all of that stuff plays into it. Yeah, man, that is such a great point. I'm glad you're saying that because the thing that he began with is that you have had these lies fed to you as women, mm -hmm. right? And he says, I'm sure some of you are going to go on and have very successful careers, but it is it is my thought that there's probably nothing more fulfilling to you than to be a wife and to be a mom. Like, where is the controversy in that? So some <laughs> of you are going to go on and have these successful careers in what would be considered the corporate world. But then there are others of you and probably the majority of you who are looking forward to being a wife and a mom. If, if it's all about women empowerment, okay, then why isn't the woman who elects to marry and care for her family in whatever capacity that looks like for her, why is that not empowering? Because it's associated with an archaic, oppressive religion that has that royal handbook. <laughs> Yeah. That we need to all get rid of, right? <laughs> uh -huh. Like, why do, why do we have to submit ourselves to the Royal Handbook? It's like anything right. that goes back to the authority of God, mm -hmm. anything that paints a picture of the holiness and the worthiness of God, it's like mm -hmm. we've got to put that to death in our culture. Guys, yeah. this is exactly what we saw happening when Jesus called Lazarus back to life. Mm -hmm. Do you remember in the scriptures where Jesus calls Lazarus back to life? He comes out of the tomb mm -hmm. and they have to remove the grave clothes from him because he's still like wearing these grave grave clothes. Mm. But then do you remember what happens after that? You've got the religious leaders wa watching him walk around mm -hmm. and their solution to Lazarus walking around is we got to kill him. <laughs> now, why do they have to kill Lazarus? Because Lazarus is mm. an ever present reminder that Jesus is God. When, when they see him walking around, okay, he reminds not only them, but he reminds every onlooker that Jesus is who he claims to be. That's he just right. called this man who was dead and dead <laughs> from a tomb mm. by name. He got out, came out in the clear, distinct grave clothes, okay? Mm. Kill him. Why? <laughs> because he points to Christ. Mm. Because he gives glory to God. Man. His existence gives mm. glory to God. When we as women undertake our role, okay, as a wife and a mom, if that is the station <laughs> and the vocation that God calls us to, let me be very clear. Mm -hmm. If that is the station and the vocation that God calls us to, when we do that well, do you understand that we are glorifying God and that mm. we are pointing back to him? And you know what our culture says? Kill it. Mm. kill it so you've got harrison bucker who stands up and his, who says <laughs> that god has a design he has uniquely designed women to be wives why is that controversial that i just said that <laughs> god has uniquely designed women yeah. to be wives. you also use the word roles Our people like we have pulling roles. out their hair when you hear <laughs> when you we hear have that. roles like what no nah, i could do what he does and 
Uh, we have roles. Uh, Man, catch same? me outside. We have roles. <laughs> we have roles as wives and as women. And mm. and I want to say that strongly. Like I am not oppressed. <laughs> I have I have man, oh my goodness. I have the liberty to do and to be what God has called me to be. Amen. And I don't suspend that by being a wife and a mom. I walk into that Amen. by being a wife and a mom. Yeah. That is what God has called me to. Every woman who understands that needs to stand up and say that and stop thinking, well, I don't want my friends who work. <laughs> Look, I work mm -hmm. and I also have this calling. But that calling is subordinate. That calling is second to my obvious calling of being a wife and a mom. Mm -hmm. And if one of those roles, the, the, the predominant roles that I hold as a wife and a mom, if that suffers, then that external calling has to be tweaked or sometimes in some cases it has to be jettisoned mm -hmm. because it's in competition for the clearly stated role that God has called me to. Amen. This is something that is not a popular conversation to have today. Right. This is something that offends people within Christendom, if you will, on all sides. Mm. Why? Because it makes us go back to the Lord for his leadership. It forces us to say, God, what have you called me to? Yeah. Like, what are you, yeah. what are you calling us and our family to? Right. We are looking for these cookie cutter solutions where we can say it's all this or it's all that. We're going to, again, this is a multi-part episode here because <laughs> we're going to talk about the dominion theology of husbands. We're going to talk about the trad wives. All of these things to me, I'm sorry, with respect for people and how they, you know, live in the world, this is foolishness to me. <laughs> these things have no root in scripture. Yeah. They are from the imaginations of men and women. Right. And they can monetize their imagination. Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing because I always look at the the church and I'm like, why are we giving ear to this stuff? Why are we? Why? Do, why is it uh, growing within the church when we have laid out in the scripture, the straight edge of scripture, how we are to act and and to live? It's like these things come in so easily, mm. and I feel like, man, it's like the door is wide open. <laughs> Like, but it shouldn't be that way because we have our standard, we have the book, we have God's word. Mm -hmm. But seem like these things just, man, they find it's like roaches. Like they come in, they come in, you <laughs> have one little crack. New it's Orleans. like, man, New you know, it's, it's like man. Listen, let me tell you something though, because you're really hitting on a on an excellent point. The reason these things make their way into the church is because we are not people who read God's word. Mm -hmm. We are people who are more content with listening to people give commentary on God's word. We're more content listening to pop culture. We're more content looking at what our traditions have been, what we're comfortable with. Okay. So this has already been established for me. This has already been laid out and I don't have to depend on God. Mm -hmm. I don't have to need God for direction. I don't have to need God for guidance. I don't have to need God for life and godliness. Right. Oh. When God has made accessible to us his will, he has made accessible to us what he desires for each and every one of us. Yeah. But we won't seek him because that's just too hard. That's the difficult work. The easy work is reading a quick blog post and then trying to apply some of the practical points. Mm. Okay, that's the easy work. Yeah. The easy work is listening to a podcast where someone says, here's how I have arrived at my position. You can go and think the same. Mm. And so then we walk away feeling like we spent time with the Lord. You haven't spent time with the Lord. You spend time with your top podcaster. <laughs> and look, I'm putting myself in the same category. Yeah. If we are the source for how you are engaging and living in this world, then that's a poor source. Mm. The source must be Christ always, right. every time, going back to the word of God and establishing what the standard is in your life based on God's word. Amen. That has to be the position that we take. Yeah. Okay, I want to. there's another clip here that I want us to get into mm -hmm. because Harrison Bucker also talks to men. Yeah. Another something that has been lost in this conversation that has brought the Dominion men out, okay, <laughs> is that Harrison Bucker also speaks to men. He doesn't just talk to women. I want to talk about that. Before I do, I want to remind you that we have a conference that is coming up yes. um, that more and more, okay, you can see the necessity of it. Oh, Man, we've got to be culture proof on. in this world, yes. okay? We've got to be able to live in this world without having the world live in us, mm. and we are committed to that conviction. Yeah. So we are bringing in speakers from across the country That's to right. help with biblical worldview formation, to shape and train children and teens. We have a youth and a teens track uh, 
available for ages four to 18, yeah. I want to say. Um, and it's all about apologetics. It's about culture proofing and equipping kids to stand in this culture, not just giving them a bunch of knowledge, but engaging them so they can practically talk it out. It's about modeling what it looks like to be a Christian in today's culture. It is also for parents and it's for grandparents. And young it's adults. also for aunts and uncles and first time this yeah. year. Yeah, we have college some, and career some breakout sessions for young adults. You know, um, uh, it's going to be great as far as biblical worldview and navigating the things that you are seeing play out in the culture. Yeah, you know, the, this is just a resource to help you in your Christian walk. You know, and so we want to provide that because we, it's time that we have to be culture proof. Yeah, we have to be culture proof. We see and talk about these things, and we have to go back to the Word of God to see how we are to live out our lives in the culture that we're living in. Yeah. Yeah, and look, it doesn't matter whether you are homeschooling or traditional schooling, whatever it is, whatever stage of life you're in, the Culture Proof Conference is for you. This is a conference for believers to equip them to live in this culture. Also want to let you know that we have got some very generous partners who have said, hey, listen, if there are people who want to attend this conference and they don't have the resources to do it, they can't afford registration, we want to underwrite that. Mm -hmm. So reach out to us, go to cultureproof.net and let us know, hey, I wanna attend this conference. I can make it to the Memphis area, but man, can you guys help us with conference registration? We got you. We yes. can help you with conference help. registration right. because some of the Culture Proof uh, partners mm -hmm. are saying, hey, we want people at this event yes. and we are willing to make that happen. Please don't stay home because you don't have the resources. Yeah. Reach out to us and let us see what we can do to help you. Cultureproof.net is where you want to go. Cultureproof.net. Yes. All right. Harrison Bucker mm -hmm. didn't just talk to women. He also talked to men. Here we go. Gentlemen here today, part of what plagues our society is this lie that has been told to you that men are not necessary in the home or in our communities. As men, we set the tone of the culture, and when that is absent, disorder, dysfunction, and chaos set in. This absence of men in the home is what plays a large role in the violence we see all around the nation. Other countries do not have nearly the same absentee father rates as we find here in the U.S., and a correlation could be made in their drastically lower violence rates as well. Be unapologetic in your masculinity, fighting against the cultural emasculation of men. Do hard things. Never settle for what is easy. You might have a talent that you don't necessarily enjoy, but if it glorifies God, maybe you should lean into that over something that you might think suits you better. I speak from experience as an introvert who now finds myself as an amateur public speaker and an entrepreneur something I never thought I'd be when I received my industrial engineering degree. Okay, so <laughs> do hard things, he says to men. Mm -hmm. He says to men that you set the tone for the culture. He says to men, you're necessary in your role as a husband and a father. Yeah. This right now, <laughs> okay, preceding the revelation that Diddy Combs actually did abuse his girlfriend, <laughs> And the footage did come out. Why you're like Mickey? What's the connection there? Because Diddy Combs was fatherless. Mm. Diddy Combs, Diddy Combs, okay. Mm -hmm. Sean Diddy Combs is one example, one example of the case in point. Yeah. That Harrison Bucker is making. Mm -hmm. Okay. He beat his girlfriend inside a hotel. It was captured on on video footage released by CNN just this past weekend. And he came out and he apologized. Said, "Yeah, I did do that." But all before, it's like, man, these allegations are, you know, we mm -hmm. know that he quickly settled with her previously, which to me yeah, is an indication that you yeah, did it. Giveaway. Okay. And now the footage is out. What's the, what's the problem? What's the problem? He didn't have a father. Mm. His father was shot. His father was a drug dealer. Some, some people say an insider, but that's neither here nor there for this conversation today. But his father was shot and killed. Mm. He was like two years old. So he didn't know his father. He grew up fatherless, without aim, without an anchor, unmoored in culture and society. And that's the result of it. And people, well, he was all successful until he started. No, he was never successful <laughs> by eternity standards. He was never successful. Right. If you live in this world and you value what this world values, then yeah, Diddy Combs was successful. But the point that Harrison Bucker is making is that fathers matter. That's right. That's right. And it, that's a countercultural <laughs> stance today because the, the mindset today is men are toxic. 
Oh and goodness. you don't need a dad. And even on uh, Father's Day, mothers can get father. <laughs> All that stuff, <laughs> man. It's, it's, it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, yes. it's insane. Yes. But it God is. has a design, male and female, father, mother. And you can't get away from it. I don't care. And when you do try to get away from it, you have chaos. That's right. And he spoke to the chaos in the streets, the violence. We all know it. Yep. Come on. Come on. It's like everybody sees it. Yes. Everybody understands, man, there's a deficit, you know, when a father is not there. But these narratives float around our culture and we embrace it and all this kind of stuff, man, as the church, once again, mm -hmm. not so. Mm -hmm. Not so. So here's the here's the fallout and and we're really just kind of building our case on you know where we want to go as far as these podcast episodes are concerned. So stick with us because we're going to lay this out over several episodes. But here's been the fallout, okay? There has been the call to cancel Harrison Bucker, okay? You are toxic. You are everything that is wrong with America. This is why we are waiting for your ilk to die out, okay? Mm -hmm. The the white conservative Christian men we are waiting for you guys to expire <laughs> so that we can have the nation that we uh, want. Nope, okay. Because you got black conservative Christian men <laughs> like me <laughs> and waiting for you to die out too. Yeah, well, Cause you're, <laughs> you don't love yourself. I mean, you hate yourself. On. Right. So, but here has been the fallout, the fallout, the request, the demand from the howling banshees has been <laughs> cancel him, cancel him when you could make out what they're saying. Okay. <laughs> right. In other screams. ways, it's just been like <laughs> shrieks and, <laughs> you know, oh it's just, goodness. it's, it's the meme of the woman screaming after out. Trump's election. You know, okay. You, there's some more demons up in there. <laughs> All right. Uh, but when you can make out what they're saying, the calls have been to cancel him, mm. but here is what we see coming actually coming from, um, from the Kansas City Chiefs, which I think is so important. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the DEI officer for the Chiefs said, you know, or, or for the NFL, the DEI officer for the NFL. That position say that. needs to be um, done away with. Well, there's been some exposure happening in a lot of different you know offices, okay? And so um, we need to talk about that. Yeah, okay. that's another story. It is another story. It's a great <laughs> one. Uh, but we don't have time to get into it today, okay? Uh, the DEI domino is falling. Yeah. Let me just say that. To. Okay, it is falling. And and it's 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 really interesting to watch. Okay. All right. Let me look what you did. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me just say this. Okay. Um, the DEI officer mm -hmm. for the NFL, mm -hmm. and, and let me let me pull up his exact comments here. Okay. So the DEI officer for the NFL um said that those comments that came from Harrison Bucker are actually not the comments or not the position of the NFL. Okay. So basically they disavowed those comments. Right. Um, they distanced themselves from those comments uh, and, and left Harrison Bucker out there, you know, to kind of fend for himself. Mm -hmm. But in the wake of that, there have been several things that have happened that are just phenomenal. Number one, I have to say, as of Friday, which was your birthday, okay, mm -hmm. uh, his jersey for women has sold out online. <laughs> this kind of stuff usually happens. So it? funny to me. Okay. <laughs> so the oppressor, oh, all right, boy. the oppressor of women, the 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 thing, the, the one who is wrong, everything wrong with men, his jersey in specific. <laughs> Okay, women sizes. That's funny, the women he's a cut. He's a kicker. That's not like the glamorous. We, we wouldn't even know who he is. Oh boy. We wouldn't even know who he is. So, in fact, and let me just also say, I did not know who he is. You guys know that I'm I don't like know the athletically challenged. I, I didn't know. Okay. I mean, look, and they won Super Bowl. Like, <laughs> you know, kickers are not that. You know, they're not the ones. No. And so, hey. So his jersey <laughs> has sold out. All right. Oh. Here's a story from the Daily Wire uh, just at the end of last week. Although the NFL tried to distance itself, okay, from Kansas <laughs> Chief or Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Bucker after his openly traditional remarks at Benedictine College, some of which were specifically directed toward women, they are still making money off of him. As of Friday, demand hmm. for women's jerseys with his name has been <laughs> so strong that the NFL store has reportedly sold out. Wow. All right. According to OutKick, this is what they said. The jersey shot up the best-selling ranking at the NFL store on Thursday. And as of publication Friday, all of the women's jerseys are out of stock. That's from the <laughs> website OutKick. Um, what does that tell us? What does that tell us? That tells us that women who have not been bought by the liberals, mm. that tells us that women who have not been told what their thoughts ought to be, 
are living what he's saying. Mm. They are living the life that I make it possible for my family to thrive. I make it, I see myself as the heart of my home. Mm. I see myself as helping my husband because that is my calling. And by the way, please stick with us because we are going to lay out what a helper is. Mm. We are going to lay out what submission is because the helper is a high calling. It is not a demeaning role. I don't want to get into it (laughs) because we are going to dedicate an episode to it. You have to listen. Okay. You have to listen because it is worth taking our time and working through we have demeaned the role of wife because we don't know what it is. Mm. And just going back to what is considered traditional norms in our culture is not enough Mm -hmm. because it allows us to demean the role even further. When you go back to the straight edge of scripture and you see what a helper is, you're like, whoa, yeah, whoa, what an, (laughs) whoa, what an honor. about empowerment. (laughs) <laughs> through the they scriptures. don't know. They don't know. <laughs> Will the great, they don't oh, know. Man. When women know what it is to be a help, when you mm, understand, man, how God sees you, mm-hmm. how God designed you, and you start to see that as a blessing and a gift and an asset to your family rather than a liability because oh, my husband is just not like me. Of course, mm. he's not like you, because if he were just like you, one of you would be unnecessary. Mm. And you know what? That's what our culture is trying to say today. Yep. Our culture is trying to say, yep. you know what? Y'all just go ahead and pair up same and same. And you know mm. why? Because one of you is unnecessary. That's what our that's what the world is saying. Right. But what does the Bible say? Mm. The Bible says that he knit us together, he formed us the two to become one. The two to become one. Yeah. But then hidden in this is a picture of Christ and the church. Mm. And there's also hidden in this a picture of the role and the work of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Man, I so don't want to get Spirit? it. Okay, don't Okay, all no. right, all right. Mm-mm. We're gonna stop it. Mm-mm. Okay, all right. Don't don't drag <laughs> us into it. Listen to me. Oh here's, boy. here's what I'm saying. Mm. So the Harrison Bucker jerseys have sold out mm. online. Okay. So basically women are lining up to get them. But then you've got the owners of the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the Hunt family coming out and basically saying, we agree with Harrison Bucker. Mm-hmm. Here's Gracie Hunt. She was on Fox and Friends last week um, talking about pickleball and other things. <laughs> um, but here is Gracie Hunt responding to the on-the-spot question about how she feels. She's the daughter of the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And she's being asked a question about how she feels about what Harrison Bucker said. And here is her response. Uh, the couch would like to know, as America would, the, the reaction from the Hunt family regarding the kicker, Harrison Bucker. Well, I can only speak from my own experience, which is I've had the most incredible mom who had the ability to stay home and be with us as kids growing up. Um, and I understand that there are many women out there who can't make that decision, but for me in my life, I know it was really formative in shaping me and my siblings to be who we are. So you understood what he was talking about? For sure. Okay. And I really respect Harrison and his Christian faith and what he's accomplished on and off the field. Okay. Well, <laughs> so what, what's, what, what are we saying here? We're yeah. saying that caring for the home and the family works. You know what? I, it's coming. I, I'm, I'm sure it's out there right now. I'm sure. I just haven't uh, heard it a lot. But I think that's going to be a big conversation, a more conversation about privilege as these type of stories come out. Yes. Because they're going to say, well, these women, you know, their husbands are football players yes, and owners is- and, you know, and, or they have these, it's, that's a white thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like other people, black people can't, man, we can't do that kind of thing. That, that thing is, you know, that's for this. And I can see that being another cog in the wheel of the whole, like, you know, privilege and all this kind of stuff going on. Yes, you are exactly right. That is actually where <laughs> this is all headed. Um, I've got another quote here that I want to squeeze in before we wrap up our podcast for today, this particular episode, because there's so many more places Mm -hmm. for us to go and we will go to those places. But let me just read this quote. Here is Tavia Hunt, the wife of the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs. And this is what she said. I've always encouraged my daughters to be highly educated. This is on her Instagram page, by the way, Mm -hmm. to be highly educated and chase their dreams. I want them to know that they can do whatever they want that honors God. But I also want them to know that I believe finding a spouse who loves and honors you, okay, um, 
as or before himself and raising a family together is one of the greatest blessings this world has to offer. Studies show that committed married couples with children are the happiest demographic. And this has been my experience as well. Affirming motherhood and praising your wife, as well as highlighting the sacrifice and dedication it takes to be a mother is not bigoted. It's empowering to acknowledge that a woman's hard work in raising children is not in vain. Countless highly educated women devote their lives to nurturing and guiding their children. Someone disagreeing with you doesn't make them hateful. It simply means they have a different opinion. Again, this is Tavia Hunt, the wife of the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. And this is her response on her Instagram. She says this, she continues, let's celebrate families, motherhood and fatherhood. Our society desperately needs dedicated men and women to raise up and train the next generation in the way they should go. Proverbs 31, 28 says, you know, people are screaming when she starts <laughs> quoting scripture, her children arise and call her blessed, mm. her husband also, and he praises her. Mm. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all in quote. She goes on embracing the beautiful role that God has made is something to celebrate. I also caution against taking things out of context. Sound bites overlaid with hateful comments are not what we want to model for our children and others. We need more dialogue and values, in my opinion, in this country and less hate. Mm. Tavia Hunt. Yeah. So it seems that the momentum is on Butker's side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think it should be because I, I think his I comments agree. come from a place of a strong conviction that he has the right to have. Amen. Amen. He has the right to his opinions. All right. We're only scratching the surface. <laughs> this is going to be a multi-episode discussion Please stay with us through this discussion. And if it's important to you, if you enjoy it, would you give it a five-star rating mm -hmm. over on Apple Podcasts? Also leave a comment that helps us to grow our reach, that helps us to grow this podcast and also insulate it from the algorithm that would suppress uh, what we're talking about. Yeah. You can be a part of helping us get the word out about Culture Proof. Mm -hmm. Also, you can reach out to us online by going yes. to cultureproof.net. And subscribe to our newsletter. Subscribe yes. to our newsletter cultureproof.net yeah when we resist those cultural trends that rival the truth we remain culture proof until next time lord willing god bless